Hello there and welcome back to my home sewing studio. My name is Ann Tilly and you may not know this about me, but I sew all of my own underwear. Yes, that's a hard brag, but it's because I believe you too can make your own practical everyday underwear at home. Whether you've sewn underwear before or you're just getting started, I have some great takeaway tips for each step of the process that can help you streamline construction and get you top-notch results. Let's start with the pattern. There are tons of patterns out there to help you get started, but don't feel tied down to following it strictly as the way the designer intended. Relying on a ready-made pattern is gonna give us as much success as relying on ready-made garments. And the whole point of doing this is to get a custom fit. So I encourage you to practice pattern manipulation even if you don't feel like a professional pattern maker. Let me show you an example of a recent manipulation I did to an ill-fitting garment so you can get one idea of the way this can work. I think that the crotch is a little long on this pattern and that's what's making the back right up higher than I want. So to test this theory, I while I had the underwear on, I... <laughs> Lord, y'all know, I put a pin in not the most comfortable spot, but it did help me to lower the back leg to where I wanted it. But at the same time, I noticed that it lowered the back rise at the top, which makes sense, right? First, I'm going to figure out how much I want to remove from the crotch. My pin shows one inch on the fold, so that means two inches in total. So I'm going to mark up from the bottom here two inches and cut. Every time you change a piece of your pattern that will be sewn to another piece, you need to double check that those two pieces still match. So see here, we cut this off and now the front is narrower than the back where the seam will be sewn. I'm just gonna take that original piece that we cut off since we know that that originally matched the back and tape it to our new shorter length of the front. So basically it's like we took out the two inches in the center of the crotch. To fix the back rise, I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and tape it to where we want to add on to the pattern. It makes sense to me to just add back that two inches we took off from the bottom, so I'll mark up two inches at the center back. The side seams felt good where they are. So I'm not gonna change anything about them. I'm just gonna blend from our new back rise to the original side seams. Now that I've made these changes to hopefully improve the fit of this underwear, all I have left to do is cut out a new pair, try them on and go from there. My best advice is start with the pattern, sew the principal seams, try it on, and use your body to help you make decisions on what needs to be changed. And this is a long going process, so don't feel like you have to know all the answers right away, but I'd encourage you to get started. Choose a fabric with stretch. We're looking for a knit fabric that has stretch in its fiber content. Proper names for stretch are lycra, spandex, elastane, etc. And you're looking for at least 5% to be stretch of its overall fiber content. This is going to give maximum comfort and even better if it's a four-way stretch. That way you can potentially cut your underwear on the straight grain or the cross grain as long as they're equally stretchy. Sew a better liner. Start by practicing cutting out the liner at the same time as you cut out the front panel. This makes it so much easier to cut this tiny little fiddly piece and you can guarantee that they'll be the exact same shape. Sandwich your back panel in between the front panel and the liner to create a polished finish on the inside as well as the outside of the garment. To help you do this, you can notch the center of each of the three pieces that are gonna be attached at this point. Bonus points if you can remember to do it while your fabric is still folded in half after cutting it out. Then push your liner to the front panel and secure it down before you sew the side seams.
Explore a variety of finishing techniques for the waist and leg openings. There's a ton of different ways to handle these, some more time consuming than others, some more fiddly than others. I would encourage you to find what fits your style and skill level. The simplest way I found is just to leave the edges raw. In this case, we really want to have a good stretchy fabric to help keep our garment up. And I found that a boy cut style kind of does better for this because you have more fabric to help keep you covered if it rides up over time. I would make sure if you're going to use this technique to tack the top and bottom of all of your serges, or if you're doing a narrow zigzag stitch, just make sure you back stitch really well in these areas. Another elastic free option is to fold down the raw edge and secure it with a dotted zigzag. Having this little bit of a stitch gives you somewhat of a grip, but it's still much softer than conventional elastic. The main difference I would make if I wanted to sew this style is I would go ahead and trim down the liner before I fold the front panel back to help alleviate bulk in this area. Now let's say that you're interested in an elastic edging option. This does provide the most polished finish and you get a lot of fun decoration with this. My two favorite elastics are a fold over elastic or elastic lace. For fold over elastic, I don't even bother folding it over, which makes it that much simpler to sew and gives you a flatter finish. You would treat each of these elastics in the same way. Measure the lengths of elastic you need on your body to gauge tightness and cut. Sew each elastic length into a loop. Stretch and pin the elastic loop evenly around the opening and sew down with a dotted zigzag stitch or a cover stitch machine. I personally prefer fold over elastic because it really stands up in the wash over time. Elastic lace can tend to fray a little bit. The important thing to keep in mind when choosing what finishing option you want to do is that they all employ a variety of seam allowances. For example, the elastic lace adds up to three quarters of an inch to the raw edge of your fabric, whereas the elastic free fold back option takes away up to three quarters of an inch of fabric. So keep that in mind when you're cutting out your garment. Well, I hope I gave you some great new ideas to help you explore underwear making at home. The most important thing is for you to find what works best for you so that you can apply it to your regular sewing life. Until next time, my name is Ann Tilly and happy sewing.